Hey guys, Matt here, Home Farm Ideas again, and today I wanted to do a little bit more video on my uh, my mason bees, my crown bee mason bees. Um, I wanted to kind of cover a little bit more stuff on them, uh, things to consider when you're getting your bees and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> um, if I forget anything, guys, you obviously know. Post in the comment section below and um, ask questions and all that stuff. You know what, when you guys ask questions, I look up stuff too that I don't know. So um, if all of us could actually um, consider that we're gonna be helping the next person that watches the video or the videos of uh, my mason bees. So um, anyways, let's get to it. I wanted to, like, like I said, cover some other things that you're gonna need and kind of how you wanna set up your clay too as well. Like if you don't have clay around your yard and stuff, uh, which a lot of people do, but if you don't, um, they do, with the kit I got, they give you a, um, uh, a bag of clay. And uh, you need to mix it pretty good. I mean, you need to mix it right to where you gotta consider that the bees are gonna be scooping it up with their mouths and then, um, and then you know, carrying it off. Um, so it, it can't be too watery, but it, it, it needs to be almost like, um, like a thicker, toothpaste not like a not like runny super runny but like a thick toothpaste um, that way they can carry it okay so it just needs to be damp basically all right so anyway let's get to it crown bees does send out this um, book this is the second edition of native bees or book on native bees um, so you know it kind of goes over a, um, I think it's leaf cutters uh, mason bees and then uh, you know more native bees let's see real quick here let's see yeah and then wild hole nesting bees <laughs> i wonder if the hole is wild or the bee is wild yeah but wild hole nesting bees so um i know they provide these two uh mason bees and then uh summer uh or summer bees uh leaf cutter bees um so a good little book on information about your mason bees and all that stuff uh, which is really handy because they have tips and stuff in here on how you're supposed to, um, you know, harvest your cocoons and, um, you know, uh, identifying healthy cocoons and, um, like your mason bee calendar, like, uh, when to put them out basically. So, uh, early spring, um, place nesting holes into bee house, uh, eight millimeter tubes. Uh, so basically the size of the tubes that you would want and then, um, you know, just a bunch of different information on them, when to put them out, so like uh, temperatures, blossoms are opening, around the time that blossoms are opening, and uh, 55 plus basically, so 55 degrees plus, you want to um, start putting your bees out um, around that time. I'm putting them out a little late just because I, I work a lot, so, um, but still, you, I, got, I got time so I can place them out. Um, and then late spring, you know, kind of just directions on what you need to do um, over the time that you have your bees out and stuff. So <clears throat> let me see here. And then, okay, and this is all the information on the leaf cutter bees. So anyways, um, a few things that it talks about um, in that book is basically when you're putting out your bees, if you use a lot of pesticides and stuff in your lawn or your neighbors do, um, you have the potential of your bees not hanging around. So I know some people, they say, oh, their bees just fly off. Um, and you know, that's, it's, it's hard to keep them um, if you don't have the, you know, the things just right that they need. Um, they're they're, they're or, or, an organic life form. And so they basically don't like uh, breathing in smoke or pesticides and stuff like that. And so if you're gonna be barbecuing and stuff around your bees, it's likely they're gonna just take off, you know? So you don't wanna do that. Um, but um, another main thing is, is if, you're, if you uh, fertilize your lawns and you're using inorganic fertilizers and stuff, it's, there's a likelihood that your bees could not hang out. Um, so you wanna keep them away from that. You wanna keep them away from the lawn and, and where any spraying's gonna happen and all that stuff if you use chemicals. If you don't, you should be good. Um, so that's one thing you want to make sure that you're paying attention to is don't use chemicals in your grass and um, Don't have it around the bees another thing is smoke don't have smoke around your bees It'll calm them down, but they don't want to constantly be in that so they'll end up taking off 
Um, so yeah, so you want to make sure that you have those two things. Another covered. thing is the clay. So if we look at this clay here, I just made it up. Um, I'd rather not touch it, but I probably will just to show you guys. It's not completely saturated, um, but it's not uh, really dry either. It's it's basically like thick toothpaste. So let me let me do some anyways. Okay. And this is the clay that they brought, or that that came with my my kit. I'll put the the kit in the uh, description. But yeah, it it shouldn't be much more thinner than that and it shouldn't be much thicker than that either so that's that's a good consistency and a little tip um, that I think is gonna work for me is I'm gonna put basically a pulled up water like right around here and that way it'll slowly seep into the clay because this is kind of leaning this direction so um, I noticed in nature like with my um, if you guys want to see my um, my wasp video I put a video out a while like a long time ago and it was about um, uh, what are they called? Mud daubers or, or mud wasps. And it's gotten a lot of attention, that, that video. But basically, if you look at where they're landing, they're the same kind of thing. They build with clay, okay? And so what they were doing is, is there was like little pools of water and then um, they would go around the pool of water and find a nice spot where they know um, the consistency they want. And then they would just kind of dig it up with their little um, mandibles and, and uh, pick it up and fly it off. So um, I'll, I'll put a link to that video as well on here, but this is kind of the consistency you want. Um, and then you can put a little pull, like if you're going to lean the, the tray one way, you can put a little pull and just um, have it to where it slow, so slowly seeps in. Make sure that this stays moist. Um, so come out every other day or every day and just spray it down. Um, but keeping this consistency, not too much water, okay? All right. Another couple things you want to keep in mind um, is their preferred nesting hole sizes, okay? Um, you can make your own if you want, but the holes should be right at about uh, 8 millimeters. That is their preferred nesting hole size. Like I said, I mean, you can take something and you can drill 8 millimeter holes in it and stuff like that. The only problem I would have with that is um, your bees, a lot of the time what happens is, is they get nest mites, okay? And they get like other different types of pests that can come in, but I think the mites are the, the really the issue um, with ha you know drilling into a solid block of wood. These are actually panels, so I can basically open these up, which I'll show you on later videos when I do updates. Um, but basically these open up and I can actually uh, open them up, take the cocoons out, and then I can actually uh, store the cocoons away, but I can actually rent, uh, wash these. And when I mean wash them, I mean probably I'll use like a, a light wire brush or something to just really clean them off really good. Um, so, but with these, the weeds or the, uh, the grass reeds or whatever, um, those, you don't keep those. You just kind of take a knife, you put it in the end and then you split them open and then you take all the, uh, the bees out. Um, some people they drill into them and they 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 get lucky for a season maybe, but then eventually those mites get in there and they just cause havoc. So you really want to be able to clean out your nest boxes in these nesting holes. Also, as some of you guys know, um, I had my uh, I had leaf cutter bees and I did some videos on those and it's really cool to kind of observe them and how they. How they, um, you know, how long it takes them to fly off and come back and stuff, and and you can kind of estimate where they've been and all that. But uh, one of the cool things that I really liked about them was that they had um, the way they carried their pollen, um, because they used the pollen to basically feed the larva, and um, so they would actually uh, put it on their belly or it would get all over their belly. And the reason why these bees are such great pollinators is because. Unlike the European bees, you know how they have them on their back legs, they'll have the pollen sacs or whatever. These bees actually come in and they are just clumsy and they just kind of BAM! They land on it belly first. And then they just get pollen all over the place. And so a lot of it ends up on their bellies. Um, well, it's no different with the mason bee. The mason bee, it has the same thing. It, it basically has dry, loose pollen on their bellies. And they take it back and then they get it off their little bellies and, and as they build a little a cocoon uh, and lay a single egg they put that pollen in there with them and they have food when they wake up preferred food that's another thing 
that nobody really thinks about. They can, they, I mean, they love just about any flower, anything that they can get their little faces into and, and, and get in there. Um, they like just about any flower, like I said. Um, uh, great for like fruiting flowers or uh, fruiting trees. Like, um, I, I don't know if they like lemon and, and, uh, and stuff like that, but um, uh, I have, uh, what are these things called? Pineapple guava, I have those. and. Um, I also have blueberries. They love blueberry bushes. So if you have blueberries and you want to get a lot of blueberries, um, then get these bees. Uh, they also love like nut trees and stuff like that. So um, just consider their food sources and what, what you have around you um, so that they're going to have food. So One thing I didn't mention in my last video was that um, I did mention that I put this to where it's getting part sun and part shade. Um, I'm pretty sure these bees would prefer it hotter than colder, okay? And what I mean by that is don't have your nesting box in complete shade during the summertime because it might just be a little too cold for them and that sunshine in the morning gets them up and gets them going, okay? So don't have them in full shade. You you want to find a good balance, okay? A good balance. and and um and put them in a nice spot don't put them in too much shade don't put them in too much sun put them in partial shade partial sun i would say probably uh half and half or uh more on the sunny side so 70 you know 70 percent or on or 60 percent in 50 or 40 percent so that's kind of the way you want it 50 yeah see i'm messing it up 60 percent sunshine and then probably about 40 percent shade so okay all right, so I am going to be going and getting the, the, the bees and I'm going to start putting them out now um, because I'm doing it now because uh, the sun's going to be going down and it's kind of like ladybugs. I don't know if any of you guys ever put them out, but you want to basically get them cold in the fridge and then put them out in your plants and try to do it around the time that uh, the sun's going down. That way they kind of hang out for the night and make that area their home. So that's the same idea with this. I'm going to probably put the bees right in here and maybe up here um, we'll see how i do it but um, basically i want them to come out and kind of hang out maybe go into the holes and check out home a little bit um, the differences between the male and the females is the males don't sting the females can sting highly highly unlikely that you will ever get stung by mason bees okay they are not like european bees they are not violent they are not uh, voracious nothing like that they're very docile and um, you would literally have to squeeze them and um, and then you'd have to be squeezing the right bee too because only the females can sting where the males cannot sting the males they are about 50 percent smaller than the females and they have long antennas and they also have like these white bro mustaches. Like, like it looks like they have like a mustache, like a white mustache. Um, and then the females, the female bees, um, they can have short, they usually have shorter antennas, larger mandibles or larger jaws, okay? And that's because they, they crunch up that mud or they get that mud in their mandibles and then they carry it back to the nest, crawl all the way to the back, spit a little mud, come back you know they just they do their thing like that but they need those larger mandibles and then they're larger than the males okay so that's that's the gist of it they're just big um, and I think they're a lot prettier the, the males are actually uh, pretty cool looking too because of the white mustache so anyway without further ado let's go ahead and let's go grab the bees and and get them out here and uh, I'm probably I might just let it film just for a little while just to see how it goes um, and kind of give them some privacy, you know, but <laughs> I want to film it, you know, so hopefully I get some good footage you guys But anyway, let's go get the bees. All right, so they came with an ice pack in between the two boxes that I got so um, Take that off ob obviously and then your bees most likely uh, they might come with uh, bees already wanting to fly around and stuff um, So cool them off in the fridge like I said, okay, and then let's see how this goes. They are fresh from the fridge. So hopefully this goes good. All right, so trying not to dump them out when I put them in here. Okay, there's one box in there. And then, 
it's funny too you know you say oh yeah the bees are they're non-violent and all that stuff you always get scared right if you don't like getting stung <laughs> okay and then here is bees number two um it's kind of cool right now so i don't think they're going to be jumping out of here super fast don't freak out either if you drop some okay i mean let let me freak out so anyways that's them in there you know what i'll, I'll stop the video here and then if i start seeing some action then I'll, I'll try to get the rest on film okay you guys all right so i'm seeing a little bit of movement in there do you see the bro stash i was telling you about I hate to say it this way, but my babies are being born. <laughs> so, yeah, they're checking me out. They're just like, who is that guy? Oh, God. <laughs> that was a good party last night. <laughs> See what I mean, though, about the, uh, the little white mustaches? I wish I could. You know, can I zoom in with this? If the camera gets shaky, you guys, I'm sorry. I just, I'm not a good filming type of person. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Obviously, the quality went down because of that, but let's see. Can I get it? Let me zoom out just a little. Stupid camera's shaky where it is. So, yeah, those are the males. So, I guess it's warm enough out for them to start coming to life. Um... Then the uh, cocoons that you see right next to this guy on the left, um, well, the one on the floor, or on the, uh, not on the box. The cocoons next to him, those are male cocoons. And this is the cool thing about these uh, bees as well, is because you can actually, when you process them and when you wash them off, because you can actually wash them in water, um, which we'll cover later on. but those cocoons you can usually tell them apart you can tell male from female just by looking at the cocoon so you can separate all of them uh, which is kind of neat because you can really organize your bees and stuff like that and give them to people you know if you uh, get a nest box for them and stuff you can actually give them away um, to an, a friend you know so isn't that cool cleaning their little I almost said tentacles, antennas. So, yeah, these are the boys. I wish, um, I'm hoping, I'm waiting actually. I want to see if any of the girls come out um, because I definitely want to get some um, footage of them. They're like a bluish color, uh, their bodies or their abdomen and stuff. So, anyway, I'm going to try to wait a little longer and see if I can get some footage of those. Well, three males came out and... They flew up into trees and stuff around this nest box. Um, generally speaking, males come out first, then the females. So I'm not going to bug them too much, you guys. I really want them to kind of hang out, and I want to minimize um, me messing with them. That way, when they um, get established, um, I'm hoping to get a lot more film on them. So. Uh, one other thing, when they come out, see one climbed up here and he just started pooping everywhere. <laughs> so, anyway, um, you know, and the benefit of that is it, is it puts their scent on the uh, nest box, basically. So, anyways, I'm going to cut the video off here, you guys. God bless you guys, like always, and, uh, yep, peace.